Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Chroma, where two to three players will play this abstract strategy tile laying game, creating different colors, using the basics of yellow, cyan, and magenta to create green, orange, and purple. You're going to be Draw, drawing these tiles from a bag and placing them down from the first layer to the second layer and changing the colors. The board itself actually lights up, which is going to show you the different color changes, and you're going to, on your turn, draw one, place, and pass. And you'll keep doing that until the board gets filled or no more tiles can be placed. After that, you're going to score points, whether it be in a two-player game, which is just congruently the, the shapes that you are choosing to play with. You might be getting green, and you have to try and gather as many greens that can connect as possible or in the three-player game, just trying to get the most of your color on the board. Can you fill the board with your secret color, or will your opponents manage to do so when it is filled? Let's find out in this abstract game by Breaking Games, down below. Hey guys, and welcome to Chroma by Breaking Games. Currently this is set up for three players, but it does play two players. To do the two player game, simply shuffle these guys up, these three cards here, and deal out one to each player and discard the other. And then go ahead and have make sure this board here is fully blank and all the tiles are in this bag here, nice and shuffled up. But in a three player game, everybody's going to get a card at random and you're going to place each of these different tiles in these corners here. Also, this board here is actually a light up board. When you go ahead and push this button here, it will turn on. You're going to be using this in order to see the board clearer, to see the color changes. Once everybody has a card and the board is set up, the game is ready to begin. And your objective is pretty simple. You need to get as many of your colors as possible. In a two player game, they need to be congruent, meaning they need to touch in order to score points for them. And the highest total congruent space of that color for each of the triangles will score you points. So if this person was going for blue and this happened to be the end of the game, this player would get four points. And if there was a blue over here, it wouldn't count. But if there was a line of blues here, each of those would count connected to the largest space. However, they're going for green here and the other players are going for either purple or orange. Now, this player is going to go ahead and go first. And how that works is you're going to draw from the bag here. You cannot look at what's in the bag, but you can feel. And then you're going to go ahead and pull out a piece. And then from there, you can go ahead and place on the board. You can place it anywhere on the white spaces as long as there's space. And you can place it on top of other pieces, provided that it doesn't overlap a white space. This player has played their turn. That's it. Draw and place. And the next player is then going to go. And OK, this player is going here. Uh, this player is going for green. Now, this, if, as you can see, will actually connect to form green. But this is an illegal play because, as you can see, it doesn't fill up the entire area. So this player is going to have to try and place it just like that in hopes to get a blue and a yellow here to connect for all that all those points there for green. The next player is going to go draw one. This player is going for orange, so this player might play something like this over here to avoid other players from scoring points. And it'll just keep going back and forth like that. Players are going to be drawing these little tiles out here, placing them down on the board, attempting to score points, attempting to get green here if if you're trying to go for green and uh, trying to go for purple if you're going for purple. Whenever you place up here, like I said, this is a, this is a legal move. Uh, however, if it was like this, that would be an illegal move because it's covering the white. And you always have to play if you can. If you can't place, if the board is all filled up, you have to discard that piece and it's the next player's turn. Usually that means it's the end of the game anyway. And you'll score once nobody can place or all of the tiles have been placed on the board here. And what's eventually gonna look like in this game is this board is gonna be completely filled with a whole bunch of different colors and shapes and uh, basically combinations. And whoever has the most points in the game, Chroma is the winner. Pretty straight straightforward, a simple abstract game as far as the rules go, with a bit of complexity and ever so shifting gameplay that you can mess your opponents up with. Let's come up and I'll discuss the game, uh, how it plays, the different strategies involved, and whether you should pick this game up. Currently available down below, link in the description. Chroma is a fairly straightforward, simple two to three player strategy game with the two different variants playing quite differently. Whether you're playing two players and trying to get congruent colors or three players and just trying to get the most stacked up colors of your color uh, does change how you place. On your turn, very simple. Place down a tile, then pass your turn, placing you either on the top layer or the bottom layer in order to score you points that will inevitably, hopefully, help you out throughout the game or hinder somebody else. You will be doing certain things 
that are going to mess your opponents up, specifically if you get a tile that is not the tile that can connect with another tile of yours in order to form the color that you need. And placement does matter even when you get tiles you don't want, because when you get those, you have to utilize those to mess with your opponents. It's kind of like a take that mechanic of chance. You may get a tile you need that's going to score you points when you connect it to another tile, hopefully forming a bridge or a congruent amount of colors of your type, or it's going to be a tile you don't need in which you can look at your opponent's board, where they're trying to go and how they're trying to score the colors and play something right in the middle there to kind of mess them up and, and kind of uh, confuse their strategy a little bit. And it has a lot of thought process in that. Uh, the game, of course, as you play it, you're going to start understanding what's the best way to place and how the best way to score is. And obviously, too, because you can go into the bag and you can't look at the colors, but you can feel the shapes, you can kind of grab the shape that you want. And each shape, there's a certain number of tiles, so you'll know kind of what's in the bag and what's not as tiles come out. So if you've got a bit of memory, you can start dedu deducing what has been placed, what's still available, and if you can grab those specific pieces, it can benefit you in figuring out the strategy of the game as to how you can place. It's not actually breaking the game, it's actually <laughs> breaking games. It's actually allowing you to utilize that feeling process uh, in the bag to pull out the pieces you need to score your points. So you can actually use that to your benefit. However, if you don't want to, and you simply want to play a game of dra draw and go, you can do that as well. It just limits the amount of strategy, but that's fine, especially for gateway gamers and families. This game is actually pretty interesting in the terms of uh, you can play this game as a gateway game in which pretty much anybody can play eight, nine years old, easily able to play this game. Or you can go into the more complex aspects of the game where you're starting to think of the different colors and numbers available and where they're placing and how they're placing, what's left in the bag and what you need to pull out based on what is available. And if you can do that, that in in increases the amount of complexity involved in the game. Also the two variants, two players and three players play differently as to how you want to affect your opponents and where you want to play. Specifically, two players is definitely a little more combative because you can prevent players from creating a full congruent color by placing certain things in certain areas that block them off. So there is that as, that, that normal abstract like back and forth that you can go into whereas in the three player game you're trying to just do your best with what you have to work with and you can kind of mess with whoever you want by placing tiles down where you don't need them and discarding them. This game is a lot of fun. I really enjoyed this game. This game would do really well on my live stream if I had the availability or time to play this but I have to go ahead and pass it on um, but I would like to have shown this game off to the, on the live stream because I think it's got a lot of uh, especially viewing potential. It's very gorgeous. The components are very very nice. It feels good to play the game and place down the tiles. Uh, the cards are thick. Everything about this game has great quality. Now what's here is what's here. You're going to get the tiles, the three cards, and the board. There might be more stuff you can check in the link down below if they've added that. But this is what I currently have. Uh, but what is here is enough for a full-on strategy game that plays two to three players. I would have liked to have seen a four-player version of the game. I don't know if it's possible though with this. Maybe, I guess, I don't think you could do three levels. I don't know. But, but like, if you want a strategy game that plays two players, it plays three players, it involves stacking colors and changing colors to try and score a little bit of area control, a little bit of take that aspects to it where you're kind of messing with your opponents and how they're trying to build. Chroma is definitely one I would suggest you taking a look at. I had a lot of fun with this one. Callie liked it a lot. And when we played three players with Ashley, she even had a lot of fun with this one as well. Thank you. Take a look down below if you're interested. Outro. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Chroma by Breaking Games, a two to three player abstract strategy game. If you're interested, you know where to go. You can also like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button and that bell notification button. It greatly helps us out and we appreciate it. We love you for doing it. And you can also check out my wife's game, Moonshell, a mermaid game. It's coming March 2nd and it is available for you to hit that notification button on Kickstarter and take a look at that. It's also a abstract, it's a, it's a puzzle game, I guess, more than abstract. It's, you're moving seashells uh, onto a player board. You're rotating your board. You're using super mermaid powers and meeples and all kinds of really cool things. If you like games like Sagrada and Tiny Towns, it might be something you should take a look at. And of course, go ahead and check out our Patreon, check out our Discord. We do a live events. We do all kinds of great stuff on Facebook, 6.30 p.m. PST every week. You can show, see us doing all kinds of great stuff. Thank you, Patreon supporters, for helping us out. We appreciate it, letting us send you guys some cool swag for Moonshell. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to lighting up your life next time. I gotta, I gotta light your life up. I put it on the bottom though. I, okay.
This is taking way too long. Here we go. And then I'm gonna have you zoom in so it looks like you're lighting up your life. 